coming up next on Hooton's Arkansas Football. Highlights from all over the state, including number one Springdale at number two Fort Smith Southside. A class 4A throwdown between top five teams, Pulaski Robinson and Magnolia. A double A dandy between Harding Academy and Hazen. Plus, highlights of the Airedales against the Goblins the Tigers against the Hillbillies. Plus, we'll take you to Russellville for this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week and down to Arkansas County where a Riceburg cheerleader is this week's Spirit Student of the Week. Highlights of 15 games, pre-game pep talks, post-game reaction, and more. It's Arkansas's only statewide high school show. It's Hooton's Arkansas Football, next. You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year. Cooler temperatures with the lows in the 60s at night. The leaves are starting to change a little bit, and there's big rivalry games every week. There is no doubt. We're in the heart of high school football season in Arkansas. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football, where we cover the great games and the great teams and the great young men who play the game. And every Saturday night, we have highlights from all across our state. 30 minutes of hard-hitting high school football highlights. And tonight... We'll get right to it, starting with Class 5A games from Friday night. The Bryant Hornets start of the season ranks number eight by Hoopers Arkansas football in Class 5A. And so far, Bryant has not let us down. Playing in War Memorial Stadium last night for the third time in four weeks as Bryant made its 5A Central debut against Little Rock Catholic. And on their first possession last night, the Hornets were able to score. Sophomore Todd Bryan nailed the short field goal, but the Rockets struck back as Catholic quarterback Justin Pierce rolls right by Zach Higgs, who makes a remarkable one-handed snag. That leaves Bryan players standing still, and Higgs will go 70 yards for the touchdown. The shootout was on as Bryant takes its next possession, and on fourth and long, quarterback Lance Parker stands tall in the pocket, hooks up with Zach Carter who gets down to the one-yard line. Brandon St. Pierre would dive in on the next play, and Bryant was up 13-6. Parker would go on to pass for four touchdowns in just three quarters of play, and Bryant improves to 4-0 with a big one next week at Little Rock McClellan. Final score, Hornets 40, Catholic 25. Undefeated Jacksonville played host to winless Mountain Home. Starting 5A East Conference play last night, the Red Devils jumped to an early 14-0 lead on Mountain Home. And this guy is a hooting hero. Breedrick Miles going all the way, making our highlights every week. But this punt return would come back. A holding penalty. No problem, though. Miles just starts picking up yardage for Jacksonville on the pitch play here. But it was Jacksonville's junior running back, Chris Burns, who led the Red Devils last night with 100 and one yards and two touchdowns. Good pick up there for Burns. He helped the Red Devils overcome three first half turnovers, including this one. Chris Rodriguez, he has trouble with the snap and gets it away to Justin Chamley who can't hold on to it. Jacksonville would finally settle down though in the second half and score four touchdowns down the stretch. The final undefeated Jacksonville, 42 Mountain Home, zero. Last year, Conway handed Little Rock Central its only regular season loss, and the undefeated Wampus Cats were looking to upend the Tigers again last night at Quigley Stadium. We pick up the action in the second quarter. The score is tied at seven, but not for long. As Central's Mickey Dean shoots over the left side, and he looks like he's gone, but Conway's Quincy Strickland doesn't give up. He hauls Dean down at the 10-yard line. A few plays later, it's Dean barreling in from five yards out. The Tigers missed the extra point and their lead was 13 to 7. Then with time running out in the first half, it's Conway's Kevin Wardlow. This guy can fly, scooting up the sideline for a 50-yard touchdown. The extra point was good and Conway led 14 to 13 at intermission. The extra point kicks made a big difference last night as Central missed two of them and Conway escapes Quigley Stadium with the W. Final score, Conway 22. Little Rock Central, 19. 
Oh, baby, does it get any better than this on a perfect Friday night? Number one, Springdale. At number two, Fort Smith Southside, cranking up 5A West Conference play. The top-ranked Red Dogs were still howling after last week's triumph over national power jinx Oklahoma, and they held a 14-3 lead early in the fourth quarter last night at Southside. But here come the Rebels. Southside junior quarterback John Thomas drops back, gets good protection, and lofts the deep one. Sophomore split in Slick Shelley slips away for a 79-yard touchdown. That cuts Springdale's lead to 14-9, and we've got a ball game. But the Rebels were quickly silenced. On Springdale's very next offensive play, it's senior athlete Dusty Johnson taking the handoff, splitting the defense, and taking off for 80 yards of dust. Johnson enjoyed quite a night, scoring two touchdowns, recovering two fumbles, and intercepting a pass. Springdale led 21 to nine, and its stingy defense did the rest. Thomas goes three yards for a touchdown on the final play of the game as Southside keeps the score close. Final score, everybody's number one now. Springdale 21, Fort Smith Southside 15. We, we had a couple of big big plays against a very good defense they have, and we were fortunate enough to bust a couple and uh, made the difference. Undefeated Little Rock McClellan visited winless North Little Rock last night. Talk about a couple of programs headed in opposite directions. In its first drive, North Little Rock quarterback Tim Mason has his pass deflect off the hands of teammate William Lamar and then picked off by McClellan's Reginald Arnold. McClellan would capitalize. Junior quarterback Damon Dunning's pass will be tipped by North Little Rock's Billy Burgess, but E.J. Jones hauls it in for McClellan down to the Wildcat 16-yard line. On the next play, senior Terrell Sims sprints to the end zone. Look at number 22 go. He tallied 136 yards and three touchdowns last night. North Little Rock's losing streak is at 15 now. Forget the tip drill next week. The final, McClellan 33, North Little Rock 7. Big showdown in Searcy last night. No rivalry being renewed between Cabot and the undefeated Searcy Lions. And it was standing room only as Searcy made its 5A East Conference debut. Neither team could score in the first quarter, but Cabot would take the lead. With a 92-yard drive in the second quarter, Chris Robertson pushes it in for the score, and Cabot was up 6 to nothing. It would stay that way until the third quarter. That's when we'll catch up with Adam Baker, racing 56 yards for a touchdown. Panther quarterback Greg Firestone would add a two-point conversion. Cabot extended its lead to 14 to nothing. But Cersei came right back. With Sonic Super Team running back Earl Young getting loose for a 55-yard run, that cut it to 14 to seven, heading into the fourth quarter. But Cabot would pull one of its famous trick plays. It fooled everybody, including our cameraman. But Cabot Jr. Sammy Swanson knew exactly where he was going. 28 yards to the end zone. This was a controversial play because the officials didn't see that Swanson's knee had hit the ground earlier before he took off on the run. Cersei didn't cry too long though and got over the missed call coming right back with a 75 yard scoring drive to cut it to seven when junior fullback Weston Dacus scores on a four yard run. Cabot held Dacus in check most of the night, just 52 yards on 16 carries. And the Panthers win a controversial one at Searcy, handing the Lions their first loss of the season. Final score, Cabot 21, Searcy 14. Uh, I got a little lucky on that touchdown run, the game went touchdown run, but uh, guess they didn't see me when my knee hit the ground, but I will. It's part of the game. Yeah, we're getting it together. We're going we're gonna to go all the way. You know, <laughs> we'll go all the way to the top. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 5A rankings, and just like in the preseason, the top three are the same. Springdale, West Memphis, and Fort Smith Southside. West Memphis moves back up to number two this week. The Blue Devils will play host to Cabot next week in another big 5A East Conference game. Conway is undefeated. El Dorado is at number five, holding on to that spot with a six-point win at Watson Chapel last night. Fayetteville drops down to number six. The Purple Dogs lost 44-37 to 37 
at home to Russellville last night. Those two teams, Russellville and Fayetteville, combined for more than 1,000 yards. Bryant is at number seven, then it's unbeaten time bluff. The Zebras will stay that way, playing host to Sheridan next week. Cabot is at number nine. The Panthers have won their past two games by a total of nine points. Russellville is back in the top 10, then it's Bentonville, Jacksonville, and Little Rock McClellan. Searcy's down to 14. Jonesboro is also undefeated. Next week, they will play at Jacksonville. Fort Smith Northside drops from number nine to number 16. After handing Van Buren its first win of the season last night, Watson Chapel holds on at 17, then it's the Cardinals, the best 0-4 team in Arkansas, Texarkana, and Little Rock Central, which is off to a 1-3 start. Coming up next, more of Hootons Arkansas football, including a Wild West showdown between the Golden Goblins and the Airedales. Next. And we'll begin our Class 4A highlights with our game of the week. Pulaski Robinson playing host to Magnolia. An undefeated Robinson had yet to be tested this year before last night. The Senators were fired up to take on Magnolia. Happy to see the Hootons. The Senators tried to start the game with a bang by attempting an onside kick, but it bounced right to Magnolia's Ty Keith, and the Panthers have excellent field position to start the game. Magnolia's workhorse, Marcus Rucker, comes right at you, gets the first down. On the next play, Rucker goes toward the far sidelines and sprints for a 27-yard pickup. Then, on fourth and one, who else? It's Marcus Rucker twisting his way in for the score, and Magnolia was up six to zip. Magnolia would get the ball back quickly, but its drive stalled on fourth down. That's when Robinson goes for the blocked punt and roughs the punter, which turns out to be a huge mistake because that's Gary Anderson Jr. looking like his pop from years gone by. 70 yards for the touchdown. It wouldn't count though because of the roughing penalty. Robinson's running game did crank it up and built a 20 to six halftime lead, but the Senators couldn't stop Rucker or the Panthers in the second half. Hooton's Arkansas football picks Magnolia by one in this game. The final score, Panthers 21, Robinson 20. The Stillman Hills Bears dropped down from Class 5A this year and opened 4A Southeast Conference play last night at Windless North Pulaski. Now, Stillman Hills' offense has put up a lot of points this year, but it really outdid itself last night, scoring on its first three drives. Camming Kareem for the touchdown on the first series. Later, quarterback Colby Sanders would find Emmett West across the middle. West breaks free, and he's headed for the end zone. That would be the first of three touchdown passes for Sanders. Here comes another touchdown pass. North Pulaski's Howard Foster does a good job defending, but Jason Howell tips it to himself and falls into the end zone for the score. And Sylvan Hills has totaled more than 500 yards offense twice this season, including last night. Final score, Sylvan Hills 47, North Pulaski 28. It was standing room only last night as Alma played host to 4A West rival Harrison. The Airedales have needed fourth quarter heroics from their defense the past two weeks to win, so it was no surprise when Alma and senior quarterback Dallas Smith wanted to pad a 7-3 lead just before halftime, but Smith's pass is a little bit high, and Harrison's Brent Rawson brings it back deep into Airedale territory, and the Goblins are in business. After seven consecutive runs, Harrison quarterback Rusty McIntyre hands it to Justin McCutcheon, and Harrison owns a 10-7 lead at halftime, and they would hold that lead until the fourth quarter. But as usual, Alma rallied again, this time behind the play of Smith, who ran for 209 yards and a touchdown before tossing a touchdown pass in the fourth quarter to preserve Alma's win. The Airedales find a way to get the W again. Final score, Alma 20, the Harrison Goblins 10. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas football updated class 4A ranking. Stuttgart stays on top, hangs on in a nail biter against Crossett last night. The Eagles move up to number two. Despite losing to Stuttgart, great game down in Arkansas County last night. Alma is at number three. Magnolia gets that one-point win against Pulaski Robinson. Greenwood starts the second five, then it's the Wind Yellow Jackets, the Hope Bobcats, 
Hot Springs is 4-0 for the first time in more than a decade, and Clarksville cracks the Class 4A Top 10. Then it's Sylvan Hills, the Billies, West Helena, the Badgers, and Bologna. The Eagles are in good position for a playoff run in the 4A East. Batesville drops to number 16 after losing to Bologna last night. Then it's the Golden Goblins, the winless Mills Comets, Lakeside, and the Devil Dogs. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Drew Dickerson not only led Russellville in interceptions last season, but he led the entire 5A West with six picks. But he hopes to improve on that this season. That's just his nature. Like many of our scholar athletes, Drew is never satisfied. In fact, he's already scored a 30 on the ACT, including a perfect 36 in reading, but he plans to take it again to see if he can improve his score, dedicated on the field and in the classroom. I was kind of surprised when I got it back, but kind of disappointed because my math score wasn't what I wanted to be, but I did pretty good. So Just my mentality towards everything, I'm going to give everything I do my all and try my best and everything. Always striving to improve. Drew Dickerson, an excellent choice for the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Mark, and congratulations to Drew Dickerson from Russellville, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Brought to you by Sonic. And we begin our Class 3A highlights with number one ranked Warren. The Lumberjack offense usually hogs the headlines, but last night against Dollarway, it was the Lumberjack D that made the plays. In the second quarter, Dollarway slowly driving the ball down the field before Demondre Burton spurts 12 yards up the middle for a first down. But on fourth and goal, Dollarway's Terrence Lee is stuffed by Warren's linebackers in secondary. Big play by the Lumberjack D there. That leaves Warren 99 yards from pay dirt, and Brett Smith goes to work. Hitting Roshan Fellows down the left sideline for a first down. Three plays later, Smith hits Fellows on a screen pass, and Fellows picks up close to 20 yards. Then, Smith shows his elusiveness by juking and dancing to the one yard line. And on the next play, Smith calls his own number for the touchdown, and that's all Warren needed. The Lumberjacks held Dollarway to just 166 yards, and the Cardinals haven't scored a point this season. The final, Warren seven, Dollarway zero. Former Pulaski Academy All-Stars Quentin Jones and Scott Landers were watching Friday night in the Bruins home opener against Central Arkansas Christian. Landers, a savvy linebacker, he could always find the ball and the TV camera. Pulaski Academy quarterback Adam Thrash had a big night, completing 24 of 34 passes for 419 yards and three touchdowns. But CAC's Ellis Copeland grabs the interception right here. PA's defense would not be outdone. CAC quarterback Andrew Jones tries to run the option, and he ends up under a pile of Bruins in the end zone. It's a safety for PA that puts the Bruins up nine to nothing. Thrash would go back to work for PA, standing tall in the pocket and firing the football to Rob Bradsher. Watch now as six CAC defenders take a swipe at Bradsher. He's going to score. Bradsher caught three passes for 81 yards last night. PA's John Aaron Reese caught five passes for 48 yards and returned a punt 59 yards to score. The Bruin defense did the rest, not allowing CAC a score until there was less than two minutes to go. Final score, number four, Pulaski Academy 32, CAC 7. Hillbillies were everywhere last night as the number two Ozark Hillbillies celebrated homecoming and opened four AAA conference play against West Fork. And the Hillbillies took control early, forcing a West Fork fumble on the first play of the game. Ozark goes to work with its running attack. That's senior fullback Andrew Hasty up the middle for the Hillbillies. He led the team with 117 yards on the night. Two plays later, it's senior quarterback Zach Mullins freezing the West Fork defense with the missed direction and junior Michael Pertrell streaks in for an early six to nothing Ozark lead. West Fork's senior signal caller Steven Sprick scrambles for a nice gain on the Tigers next position and West Fork would actually take a seven to six lead on the Hillbillies late in the first quarter but Ozark would rack up 252 yards rushing by halftime and pull away. Final score the Ozark Hillbillies 49 West Fork 14.
And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas football class 3A rankings after four weeks in the season. Warren is still on top. The Lumberjacks pulled out that close one over Dollarway. Ozark is strong at number two. Then it's Gosnell, Pulaski Academy, and Boonville at number five. The Bearcats have a big matchup next week against Ozark for probably the four AAA title. Duma starts the second five. The Bobcats are unbeaten and looking sharp with Anthony Gray playing quarterback. Nashville's number seven. Then it's Ashdown, Rivercrest, and Pocahontas. The Redskin defense has allowed just two touchdowns in the past two games. The Queen starts the second ten. The Leopards are followed by Newport and Clinton. The surprising Yellow Jackets continue their climb in the Hooton Pole. Truman is number 14. Then it's the Curly Wolves, Oak Grove, Prairie Grove, the McGee Owls, Dover, and Star City at number 20. Now, the Sports Medicine Tip of the Week from Martin Bowen Hefley Knee and Sport. Now, more of Hooton's Arkansas football, brought to you by First Security Bank Corp. Hey, bring it! It's been too long. Game time. Let's go. Game time in our house, on our field. Yeah. We're pretty darn tough in our house. That's okay. right. That's right. That's, that's our coach Phil Buckner talking to his team, and none of the guys on that squad had even been born the last time that Desart beat Barton, way back in 1981. But Desart came into last night's homecoming showdown with the Bears undefeated. But legendary coach Frank McClellan is hard to beat. After he got his picture made with the baby, he watched his Bears take it away from Desart. Eagle running back Edward Dunlap gets the ball stripped on the second play of the game and on the third play of the game, it's Barton's Anthony Harris running through one tackler and he's gone, heading 45 yards for the touchdown. Barton would add a two-point conversion on the quarterback keeper by Chris Vaughn. That made it eight to nothing and the homecoming queen hadn't even made it back to her seat yet. Barton was up 14 to nothing in the second quarter before Desart got a little something going. Markel Rowan on the far side, picking up good yardage and fired up. Then quarterback Brandon Stidham will roll out, decides to keep it coming right at us. Another good game for Desart. The Eagles made a game out of it despite their slow start, but Barton hangs on to win. The final Bears 22, Desart 19. Top-ranked Harding Academy blew out rival Carlisle last week, but the Bison are not quite as strong as they have been. On Friday night, number 10 Hazen was expected to at least stay with Harding Academy. Maybe the best Hazen team in 20 years could keep it respectable. Not a chance. Harding Academy quarterback Caleb Keyes passed for close to 300 yards. He hits Heath Adams, his favorite six foot four receiver in the corner of the end zone. That's a touchdown pass in the second quarter. Hazen tried to answer with its workhorse, Jacob Adams. He returned a kick for a touchdown in the first quarter. He has a little room here, but Harding Academy's Carson Fant puts his helmet right on the ball. It squirts out and Adams recovers. Harding Academy is still unbeaten and untested. The final, Wildcats 54, Hazen 20. In another key 6AA matchup, Augusta visited Carlisle. Both teams were already in the hole with the conference loss. Augusta is playing itself into shape while Coach James Clayton has had Carlisle in top form the past 14 years, averaging 10 wins per season. And because Carlisle rarely loses, there's no way the Bison had forgotten the 31 to 18 whipping they took a year ago at Augusta. But with less than two minutes left and trailing by just a touchdown, Augusta still had a chance last night. Red Devil junior quarterback Drew Harrell tosses the ball to James Turner for a nice game. But on second and three from the 32 with just over a minute to go, Harrell is intercepted by Carlisle safety Chris Elliott and the Bison hold on. The final from last night, Carlisle 16, Augusta 6. Just trying to play hard defense. I mean, we, we worked all week on our stunts and stuff, and uh, we just got it done. Real, real good job, our defensive line. They did a real good job. 
And here is Hooters Arkansas football class 2A rankings. Harding Academy still on top after thumping Hazen 54 to 20 last night. Junction City scored a couple of key defensive touchdowns last night in a win over Harmony Grove. Risen's at number three. Charleston allowed its first touchdown of the year last night against rival Labaca. Barton dressed out 16 players against Des Arc. Two of them were ninth graders. Danville starts the second five, then it's the Go Devils. Carlisle, Hughes at number nine. The Blue Devils gave Cross County a reality check, 35 to nothing last night. Hazen rounds out the top 10, then it's Mineral Springs, Des Arc, Mark Tree. The Rattlers, which just got by Horatio, 22 to 15. Next week, a big game for Murfreesboro with the Gurdon Go Devils. Jesseville's number 15 with those big bruising linemen paving the way for the Lions. Bearden is 16, then it's Augusta. The defending state runner-ups are one and two in the 6AA with Hazen coming to town next week. Smackover's 18, then it's Salem, and the Hampton Bulldogs got the first win of the year last night over number 60, Sparkman. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas football tonight. We look forward to seeing you again next Saturday night right here for Hooton's Arkansas football.